Good morning, this is Murray reporting in live from Saskatoon. Today we want to talk about This Is Lean. Um, this is just caught off the press after coming back from uh, Lean Construction Institute um, conference in Boston where I was fortunate to be able to listen to these uh, Lean Masters um, starting at the left, Will Lichtig, who's a lawyer, um, Nicholas Modig, who wrote the book This Is Lean that we're going to talk about today. Uh, in the middle, we have John Shook, who is a uh, leader of the Lean Enterprise Institute. And we have Stephen Spears next to him, just to his right, who wrote the book The High Velocity Edge. And uh, to the right of him is Bill Seed, who is from Disney Imagineering, who handles their Lean Project Implementation, and formerly of Universal Health Services. So let's get started. So, hey buddy, the planet needs help. We need you to stop having so much fun windsurfing. Please do something about climate change. It's 40% of our greenhouse gases come from your building industry. It's more than transportation and industry combined. Toyota used lean practices to become a very profitable company and produce efficient cars. That car probably gets 100 miles to the gallon. So they must know something about lean and green. Maybe they can help you. Can we use lean to deliver high performance buildings? You know, our, is our, our broken buildings busted budgets? What, we waste $500 billion per year in waste and we're facing climate change? Maybe we can build net zero homes. I just recently built a, a net zero targeted um, home. I'm living in it right now. That's actually where I'm recording this video. And, uh, but from Auden Schendler, um, Murray, we need to go big on green. It's not about building one house. We need them all to be green. So that's what this video is, is about. Um, Auden's uh, concerned about our, our climate because he's uh, he lives in the Colorado Rockies and the, with the glaciers melting and the climate changing, it's it's eating up all that powder that he loves to ski. So let's do a little bit of cowboy math. Lean to be green cowboy math. If lean could save 20% of the cost of a project and Bill Seed actually has some claims that it could be 40% when you get mastery, would that cover the 5% it costs to go to high performance designs and the 10% for renewables to go to, or that should say net zero. Does that mean that, you know, if we save 20% or 40%, it covers the 15% to get to net zero? Of course it does. Does that mean we can build net zero buildings at net zero cost? Of course we can. So the big idea, lean pays for green. Let's convert $500 billion of waste in this annual, which is just North America, and build all new buildings net zero by 2020. Skill testing question for you. One of the four largest automakers, Toyota, makes how much profit per car? I think it's $2,780 or $2,720 per car. What's the next um, most profitable company Ford make? It's down 900 and some, less than half. That is why Toyota is held in such high esteem. Lean must, they, they're, they, you know, they're, they're, um, 14 principles of lean are, are, are the guide for most of those lean masters that were on the front page of that first slide. So lean must be powerful. What is lean? What is, is it a way of thinking? Is it a culture? It's a system. John Shook, um, I, I really liked his comment that um, I never use the word lean, and, a lean word unless somebody else and the organization uses it first. A, a master can make lean easy. You know, throwing a whole bunch of buzzwords around and value stream mapping and all that, it actually made me feel lean stupid. And so that's why I, I, I'm making this video that this this was a transformational talk for me listening to Nicholas and um, and also John, that it, it, it lean is nothing more than talking about flow, value, and efficiency. And, and we can all understand those words. And uh, a good place to start with anybody wanting to start on a lean transformation is to go watch this video that John threw up on our, on the screen that shows building a house. So it's starting at the bottom, we need a foundation. What is the basic thinking? We need leadership in the middle. Then we on the left-hand side, we need process improvement. We need to build capabilities in our people to the right, number three. And that all the reason we're gonna do that is that we wanna solve problems. I mean, in, in North America, we need to recognize that there are, we do have problems and every organization has, has problems. And that's, that's what we're creating value is solving those problems. So what problem are we 
try, what are we trying to solve? Well, sometimes we focus on the wrong problems, like the design cost or the construction cost. I think we need to look at the bigger picture and uh, consider about how people work in their space and, and how to make them more productive and, and design processes and uh, maybe making things not so big but better quality and better productivity. So let's make sure that we're right solving the right problems. So um, for me, um, I, I was at a Moose Jaw Hospital, a lean project, and we, we had, in the big room, a big room being the place where all of the collaborative collaboration happens. And I, I was talking to Jennifer from Shandos, and I says, uh, you know what, I've been doing all this lean stuff for the U of W, and, and do, we're delivering, creating great relationships, delivering successful projects. Um, they're creating value for a client. What about, I need to figure out how to do lean within my own organization. Do you know anybody? So she, she um, said, oh, I know somebody. I'll, I'll. And uh, so it, two weeks later, she says, you know, this Dennis Cuckoo from uh, Oil Country Engineering, he, he does, he, he, they design drill rigs and they use lean within their organization. So she set it up, gave Dennis a call. We hit it off. Um, he invited me and two of my staff to go to Edmonton and uh, come and see their lean engineering company. And uh, basically... Um, Dennis told me, um, you know, they, had, they spend one day a week um, just working on their systems. It was a, on a Wednesday. And uh, so we basically saw how they worked. And uh, one of the things that they, they had was, uh, he, he said, we, you know, we have a, a spare team. They sit around and I'm, I'm thinking, well, how, how can you afford to do that? You know, so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Um, why would Dennis have a spare design team playing cards at Oil Country Engineering? Why would he do that? That seems so wasteful. And then we'll, we'll come back to that question later. Um, today we're going to talk about that foundation with Nicholas, a book I highly recommend that you read, Resolving the Efficiency Paradox. This is Lean. So um, Nicholas, in his keynote, told the story of Allison. She comes into our, our typical healthcare, not all healthcare facilities, but most of them are set up to be resource efficient. And, the, and the, there's a backlog of patients and they, they come into the do doctor's office. And then Allison, in this case, it's, has felt a lump on her breast and she needed, she's very concerned and worried, of course, as we all would be. And she needed to find out what, what's, what's going on with her life. And so she goes through all of the tests and the visits and the doctors and the nurses and the tests and the waiting for the tests. And it takes her 42 days, 42 stressful days in order to get her um, to get diagnostic of, of what, what the problem is. And um, so the, the hospital is being very resource efficient at, you know, they keeping people busy doing work. Um, but in the meantime, the, the patient or the, the value that we're creating isn't there. So Sarah was fortunate to come to the, the Lean Hospital where um, they focused on um, creating value for her, um, giving her a, a diagnosis so that she can sleep at night, so that she can find out wh wh what's going to go on with her life. So she goes in and there, there's actually Lean Hospitals that could uh, get that same result in two hours. So, so what's the difference? What, why would somebody do that? Well, the, the, one of the key principles of lean is that we, we need to focus on that one patient and get all the work done and then pass on, and then work on the next patient and, 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 and create value for those patients as opposed to trying to juggle all the balls with all of those patients and not doing a really good job of addressing anybody's value proposition. So um, they, we, we need to fix those bottlenecks in the system and uh, that we can all relate to of, of going through an airport. Well, the same thing happens in a hospital. We, if, if we focused on flow and getting people flowing through, maybe we could get somebody to hop, be able to just pick them up and drop them onto the plane and have a security check in the van or some other process or way of, of getting people through the system in a faster period of time. So that's what flow efficiency is. Um, so going back to um, this thing here, we can see the, the paradox, the efficiency paradox is that um, all of the waiting creates a whole bunch of work of re reconnecting with Allison, 
um, setting up those appointments. And everybody is busy as a resource doing work, but it's the wrong work. It's not creating value for that patient. So um, resource efficiency can result in long throughput times that generate new needs. Dealing with many units creates inventory. Many handoffs generate frustration. Every appointment takes setup time. So when we focus on resource efficiency, we end up with a word that I have a hard time even saying. I think I got it. Superfluous work. Work, it's secondary need stuff that if we just focused on getting that patient through in a short throughput or in a higher spot, time we would throughput more patients and it would be result in flow efficiency so that's what we want to achieve so once again the focus on resource efficiency tends to increase the amount of work that there is to do so that's not efficiency resolving the efficiency paradox we need to think of lean i got the double word there i'll have to fix that on this slide as a relay race work needs to flow trained fit and disciplined to be fast we need to work faster pass how many in a in a relay race do we take nine batons or do we take a single baton a single patient or multiple patients all at one time let's pass a single baton and upstream the person is ready to take the handoff when we're we're handing off work are there people even there when we get there and everybody can see everything so um nicholas boiled it down to you know all of the is what's lean all about well, he, he, he boiled it down to these three little circles on a page. Think of Toyota. They, they create value for their customer. Way back when they were the worst car manufacturing company, they decided to ship. Well, we're only going to ship from Japan that's very short on resources exactly what's being demanded in North America. A blue Toyota and uh, with these features. And let's limit the amount of features because uh, all those choices that the other manufacturers just create confusion and a whole bunch of non productive work and uh, inefficiency. So value for the customer. And then let's deliver it just in time. Let's flow that work through our factory and deliver it just in time. And then a word I hadn't even heard of before reading this book or, or hearing, listening to Nicholas was Jadoka. And so I have to show you slides in order to show you what that looks like. This is Jadoka. Think of it as a soccer game. Score lots of goals, see the field, the ball, and, the go and where we're going, it's dynamic. Everybody knows what everybody's doing. There's a scorecard, a, sc a score clock, how much time's left, what the score is. Um, and you hear the whistles and the cheers and you, your, your teammates yelling at you, yeah, pass me the ball and I can score a goal. Okay, that's Jadoka. This is what happens on our projects. Everybody's in their tent. They don't got their own ball. They're kicking the ball out the door and nobody knows what everybody's doing. They don't even know where the goal is. And so I just love this um, idea of Jadoka. It's probably my new favorite word, L seeing what's going on as a team. As, so this is Jadoka. This is not Jadoka. And this often looks like some of our projects, I'm uh, feared to say. You know? So we need to fix that. Learning to see. So this is lean in its simplest form. We can add methods to improve flow. So all of the other stuff is just methods and tools. And, and we, don't, don't, you don't, we don't need to feel lean stupid if we don't know what value stream mapping is. If we had a problem to solve, we will pull the right tool out to find that problem. And there's all kinds of good stuff. So you don't need to know all the, what an A3 is or a 5S. We just need to know that we're, we need to create value by creating flow just delivering things just in time and having the whole team see what's going on so that they're all focused on the same thing. So that's what lean is. This is how we enact lean. It, it it's a little bit more complicated, but I, I encourage you to go take a look at that video. And what we've talked about is the basic thinking or that, that drives this transformation. That's what this video is just about number five. You know, what's our thinking? What lean is? We need to understand that to build a foundation. So I started this, this video with the idea, why does Dennis have a spare design team playing cards at Oil Country Engineering? I didn't get that until Nicholas made it clear for me. If he wants to have, he's got all this work flowing through his, his company. And, and he's designing a drill work rig for his customer that needs to get to their work done. If he doesn't have a spare team that, you know, they're not always playing cards. What they are is a, a buffer of, of people to keep 
that when there's you know there's all kinds of demands on a company's time that some of them are unforeseen because of a phone call I, I my drill rig's broken down or I've got some service or I need a startup there's all kinds of other things by having a buffer a, a team playing cards Dennis is able to keep all of his work flowing for his at one piece of it he's doing all these designs and he's keeping that work flowing instead of having to pull his team apart to go address other things and 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 that disrupts his flow so now I understand why he has a, a team, a spare buffer sitting there so that he can keep all of that focused work and productive work flowing through his company. Lean thinking summary. Think of lean as value for customers, not your own resource efficiency. Read the book, This is Lean. Just in time, pick flow over resource efficiency. It's hard to do both. Jadoka, new word. Create an organization that respects employees that love to solve problems and score goals. And um, in Toyota, the, the, we, the, their dealerships have all of the walls, dynamic information about what their sales are on an hourly basis, what their targets are. And everybody knows what if there's any breakdowns or bottlenecks in the, in, in the sales process. And so um, if we think, just think of it as a scoreboard. Um, if you're interested in helping to transform the building industry, I'd like to encourage you to uh, join Lean Construction Institute that we're just rolling out across Canada. And if you want to learn more about Lean, um, how to build a team, implement Lean production systems, and create a collaborative culture in the comfort of your own home, you might want to consider uh, joining our Lean Learning Laboratory online training. And if there's any, you have any questions about this video, feel free to send me an email, mguy at iDesigns, or follow me on Twitter at, at Lean to Be Green. Or uh, if you have any work that you need done and using Lean Project Delivery, we have two companies, uh, in Integrated Designs, where we do commissioning and project management using Lean Project Delivery to deliver high performance buildings, or we build um, high performance design and build high performance net zero homes and so uh, next we are going to talk about lean leadership and how to rally your team thank you very much have a great day